Uh, and I'm Charles Hosale. I'm an archivist at the American Folklife Center at the Library of Congress. Uh, first off, we'd like to thank the No Time to Wait organizers for including our session Evaluating Bagger and the Bagget Bagging Software Landscape. And to all of you for tuning in remotely and in person. And in this presentation, we'll be talking about our recent project to evaluate the status of Bagger and the feasibility of its maintenance and modernization, an exploratory project which was carried out in collaboration with ABP, who will be presenting some results of this work. And thanks as well to Kate Murray for leading this project our colleagues in the Office of the Chief Information Officer, Timberly Worcester and Liz Madden, and Project Partners, AVP. Uh, we'll start off with a little background, and of course, any history of Bagger is incomplete without some notes on Bagot. The Bagot specification for transfer and storage of digital content was developed collaboratively by the Library of Congress and the National Digital Information Infrastructure and Preservation program partners, um, AKA NDIP, in 2008, and it was standardized by the IETF in 2018. For those not familiar with bags, the specification defines a bag as consisting of a base directory containing one, a set of required and optional tag files, in particular, a payload manifest, which is a tag file that lists payload files and checksums for those payload files generated using a particular checksum algorithm. Two, a subdirectory named data called the payload directory, which assumedly contains your digital content, and three, a set of optional tag directories. Bagger is an open source software application that was developed in 2011, which enables users to produce data packages according to the Bagger specification. Before Bagger, one could either hand make a bag by manually creating the required directories and manifests or use the Bagot library command line utility, which offered a range of commands for creation, transfer, and validation and man manipulation of bags. The desktop application serves as a graphical user interface to the Java-based Bagot library. And beyond providing dialog boxes and a visual reference for the bag contents, it includes features that are not available within the Bagot library command line utilities, such as the ability to customize and share project files, which are in essence, customized bag info.txt data. The latest version of the application is still available via the Library of Congress GitHub and includes an in-depth user guide for anybody who's interested in getting more info about Bagger's functionality. And with that intro, I will hand it off to Charles. Um, at the fall 2021 FAGI AV working group meeting, uh, I noted that Bagger had been receiving some shifting support at the Library of Congress and currently wasn't really actively maintained. Um, I knew that, that there was a sense in the community that it was falling a little bit out of date. Uh, and this contrasted with the place I knew it held in DigiPres education and best practices documentation. Uh, FAGI maintains and supports a variety of tools uh, for metadata description. Uh, in a variety of ways, Bagger fits into that tool set. Um, it embeds metadata and data packages and supports entry-level use of Bagot, which is an international data specification. I also know from experience that Bagger supports the AV community, and it's one of the ways to confirm fixity and integrity of digitized and born digital AV uh, in archives. So in 2022, um, Kate through FAGI, is issued a solicitation for contracts to fix Bagger. Uh, the responses varied widely, which indicated we didn't have a full understanding of the level of effort required and hadn't really scoped the request to specific development needs. So in 2023, we undertook this project we're here to report on. Our work evaluated uh, Bagger software and also the needs of current users. Uh, and this information that we've gathered will help inform Bagger's future. Next slide. Um, as Genevieve mentioned, there's a few different bagging tools the library maintains that are only sort of related to each other. There's Bagger, of course, and there's Bagit Java, which is another. Um, Bagger runs on an old version of Bagit Java, but not the current version. 
Um, you might be familiar with the old command line version of Bagot Java as well. Um, that's been deprecated. Uh, and lastly, uh, the library maintains ba the Bagot Python library. Our project with AVP strictly focused on evaluating Bagger, um, but the comparisons with the Java and Python code naturally occurred um, during the software landscape review. And I know AVP will talk about that some more. So how is Bagger used at the library? Well, I'm an archivist at the American Folklife Center. So in my day-to-day -day job, um, I use Bagger to inventory content acquired from donors and also use it to package up um, preservation copies, so process digital content that I deposit into our archival storage. It's one of our tools. Um, I also use Python, depending on the project, depending on the computing environment. I'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, the manuscript division, my colleagues at the library, they also use Bagger in a similar way. They create preservation bags and put them into long-term storage. And they also use it to deliver bags um, to researchers in their digital research stations. Um, digital services at the library who are responsible for transferring and preserving the library's most complex digital content and maintain our um, digital preservation lab. They use Bagger for small projects. So when there's only a couple of things to bag or that's a small amount of content, um, maybe a ripped floppy, et cetera. And then the library supports Bagger in part so that it's available for our donors and other partners who need to prepare content for delivery to us or receiving content from us. The Bagot spec is primarily intended to facilitate trustworthy file transfer, and Bagger is available to our partners who wish to use it. In general, we've observed that um, Bagger at the library is most often used when content's less than a terabyte. It's coming from uh, something that's a Windows file system. Uh, the operator requires a GUI. Um, they're just more comfortable in that environment. Or uh, when the uh, context of the digital preservation work is such that uh, Bagger is the approved software that's available on that machine or in that environment. So this is the current context to have in mind when we're talking about evaluating Bagger's the current situation at LC. Um, and from here, uh, we'll pass it over to Seth to report on AVP's findings. Um, and then I will come back to join you for a wrap up and Q&A. Uh, thanks everybody for joining us and we'll see you soon. Good afternoon and thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here and to share the details of AVP's assessment process with you. Bagger was created to provide a GUI for users uncomfortable with creating bags using the command line interface. In the years since its release, internal resources to maintain Bagger shrank, and it has acquired a significant technical debt. Bagger now lacks contemporary features that the user community is looking for and may no longer be useful in its current state. An earlier contract with Library of Congress to fix Bagger did not understand the level of effort and potentially overestimated the scope of work. This project seeks to better define what is required to bring Bagger up to contemporary standards and to meet community needs. AVP's goal was to establish a comprehensive understanding of Bagger's current state, its technical debt, the needs of its users community, and its performance of core functionality. This effort included multiple activities and deliverables, including a technical review, focus group meetings, specification of user stories and user personas, and gap analysis against similar tools. We began with a technical review of Bagger's code base. Our engineering partners at Portal Media conducted static code review and used automated analysis tools like SonarCube to examine factors like the code base's complexity and quality, the software's framework and dependencies, extensibility of the code base, uh, these embedded testing procedures, 
and any security concerns uh, in the current state of the code. Portal's review found a small but tiny code base with no major issues that would be considered blockers. Their, their, their analysis did identify a small number of code smells, which are issues that contribute to some technical debt but are not considered critical bugs. These included code duplication, unresolved to do comments, and outdated Python scripts. One of the tool's biggest dependencies is its graphical user interface framework, Spring Ridge Client, which was last updated in 2009. This framework and many of Bagger's underlying dependencies are now deprecated and no longer recommended for use. Following the technical review, AVP convened two focus groups to understand the digital preservation community's relationship to the Bagger application. Participants included current and former Bagger users in government, higher education, and cultural heritage organizations. AVP asked four primary questions of the focus group participants. For what purposes do or did you use Bagger? And if you no longer use it, why did you stop? We asked this to understand the user's positive or negative relationship with the tool and to determine what about the application contributes to these feelings. We also asked whether there are alternative tools to Bagger that the focus group participants have implemented or explored and how do they compare to Bagger. This was to identify candidates for further analysis and to understand whether there are features in other tools that make them more effective than Bagger. We also asked what functional requirements the community needs to bring Bagger up to contemporary standards in order to identify where the application may be extended to better support their current requirements. And finally, we asked what the community's role might be in supporting tools like Bagger and how we can ensure that Bagger is sustainable. We, and we wanted to see whether the library has any obligation to remain the host of the application or whether there are, are alternative approaches for community maintenance. The information gathered in the focus group meetings informed the definition of requirements in the form of user stories and user personas based on the focus group participants. These deliverables summarize the challenges faced by Bagger users and what they would like to see in an updated version of the application. The user personas capture the variety of Bagger users, their varying levels of technical proficiency and summary usage scenarios to provide a holistic view of user needs, challenges and the use of the tool. Personas include different types of archivists, digital preservation, AV archivists, paper archivists, but also government staff, uh, librarians, and educators. They reflect the community's dire desire to see a more performative version of Bagger with a simplified interface that is easy to use no matter your level of expertise. Finally, AVP conducted a detailed analysis of the various available tools that create and manipulate bags including common alternatives such as Dart and Exactly, as well as command line tools and libraries. The team reviewed documentation and tested each application to determine the tool's fe core feature set, compare this to Bagger's capabilities. Common gaps include the ability to generate and validate bags in batches, automated transfer of bags to storage locations, uh, such as FTP servers, uh, Amazon, uh, and other cloud service providers, and usability features like drag and drop or the use of notification to alert users at the completion of bags. Bagger's interface presents an outdated design that lacks the modern aesthetics found in contemporary applications. This is primarily in, attributed to its dependencies on Java libraries that have remained unchanged for over a decade. Our analysis also found that Bagger's interface utilizes terminology that may be familiar to experts, but can cause confusion among users less experienced with Bagit. This observation was further substantiated by feedback in our focus groups, where the word jargony was used to describe the interface. Contrary to user feedback in focus groups, tests of Bagger's performance proved faster than expected. AVP's tests show that the processing speed is proportional to the size of the bag. This reflects complaints regarding the long processing times required for such large volumes of data. The larger the payload, the longer the processing time. But size and complexity are not the only variables impacting performance. 
Tests on older hardware running Windows did result in longer, although not significant processing times. This indicates that the performance issues experienced by many may not be some fundamental flaw in the design or coding of Backer, but a result of poor infrastructure. Processing large collections of files takes time. This is further impeded if the hardware powering the operation is not up to task. We want to thank the members of the team at the Library of Congress for their guidance and participation on this project. And I want to thank you for your time. Uh, and we will discuss next steps and answer your questions uh, during the Q&A portion of this talk. Thank you. Greetings, everybody. I'm Genevieve Pagmeyer king Senior Digital Collection Specialist at the Library of Congress. Hi. All right, yeah, I can hear. There's a little bit of an echo, but I can manage. Um, or maybe the, no, it's all good. I got it. Um, so, Next steps for the library is that uh, we're sharing this data and ABP's report with libraries leaders. Uh, we've now got a really good analysis and data points that will help them make informed decisions about Bagger's future development. Uh, Seth also gave this presentation to our federal US government partners at our fall FAGI meeting at the National Audiovisual Conservation Center a few weeks ago. So other US agencies are up to date too. Um, looking further out, uh, the US government's budgets under a continuing resolution, which means we pretty much maintain the status quo and don't take on new or expanded work. So any decisions about Bagger will happen after government funding has been resolved and we know what our budget cycles are gonna be. I'm really happy with where we're at now. I think this project's a great example for how to evaluate open source software so that you can make informed decisions. Um, any questions? I think we're ready for questions. Any questions? Okay. Hello, I, I would like to ask, uh, I don't know if you heard my morning presentation. When you concept this, have you think about uh, this to last a very long time uh, and uh, second of all is the design of this uh, container or I don't know how to say it is easily recognizable and decodable after 200 years for example I only sort of got that question um, so is the question if the package would be readable in 200 years? Uh, the question is uh, if when it was concepted, was thinking uh, for very long term preservation, where a long term, very long term mean 100, 200, 500 years, and if can be easily decodable if we not have specification after, let's say, many years, many, many years, it can be easily decodable if we don't have specification, uh, file format specification. Thank you. Um, so within bags, the fixity information is very readable, but it's just kind of packaging up different file formats. So the readability of those formats is dependent on broader preservation efforts. Yeah. And, and sorry, this is Kate and Genevieve, correct me, right? So the, the bag it spec is an RFC, right? So that's highly defined, right? So there should be no issue with accessing and interpreting the Bagot spec, which is how those files are packaged together. So the, and the tool that we're talking about, Bagger, creates the bag according to the Bagot spec. So it, I think, is that the question that you're asking? What about the specification? It's an RFC. Yes. <laughs> so it's, it's made for long-term um, uh, accessibility. And now I will hand the microphone back to the people who actually gave the presentation. Thanks. Thanks for the assist, Kate. <laughs> okay. Yeah, of, of course. Uh, thanks a lot. 
Um, thank you for that presentation. We are also using um, bags and baggage uh, for receiving um, quite large volumes of data from professional film production. And um, uh, we are encountering issues and uh, quite a little bit of pressure from film producers who say it takes too long and it's too cumbersome, actually. And now I see uh, that you, uh, your, your inquiry at the LOC uh, actually oh. yielded that uh, below one terabyte, it's quite largely used, but I was wondering what's above one terabyte because that's the bulk of stuff we get actually. This one? Is that better? Oh, All right. I unmuted the wrong thing. Ah, now I can hear myself. Um, it, yeah, we we considered testing at high, larger volumes. Uh, as you say, we, we know it's often the case at the library that they are getting larger than one, five, ten terabytes. Um, we just wanted to use this as a baseline of the speed at which it can process the creation of the checksums. I, I think no, no matter what tool or system you're going to use, because it's generating checksums, it's going to take time to process through it. So when you're dealing with large volumes of data, Bagger is going to take time to generate the bags. I think what's missing is more of a user experience element, which would give some sense of the status of your bag creation or your validation. So that what's cumbersome is not knowing what's happening and if the tool is still working. Um, so uh, I think that's something we would look for in the future state of bagger but also potentially different approaches to the underlying infrastructure of the tool that would allow the use of additional computing resources beyond what's on the computer to actually generate the bags because what's it's a desktop application so it's using your computer's resources which in most cases are probably limited um so that's something we would look to in the future. Um, just to wrap up on that too, um, AFC where I work does get some big bags and we need to also bag up big content and put it in our um, preservation environment. So sometimes we've done things like use different hash algorithms that compute faster, maybe. Um, and uh, we've also, uh, like Bagot Python allows you to run it in parallel, which can be faster for um, like bags that have multiple big files. But now we're not talking about bagger, we're talking about bagging, which, you know, I'll scope it to bagger now. Uh, hi, we have a question from Sarah. Is there a sense of who is using Bagger primarily and how that maps to AVP's user stories? I wonder what the split between archives users and non-archives users, if that data is known. Yes, so... Uh, off the top of my... I mean, one of the distinctions is the technical proficiency of users. Um, we heard from a lot of users that have more coding skills or experience using the command line that they've started to use the Python library to write scripts. So they're completely bypassing Bagger because of its limitations and its performance issues. Um, 
But there are a number of users who are less technically proficient, for instance, those who are submitting bags to government organizations, whether that's as part of a records collection process or submissions like Charles would receive. Um, I'll excuse if you can hear my crying child. Um, it's a holiday so, here. It's a holiday in, in the, <laughs> over here. Um, so we do see differences. Uh, those are reflected in the user personas. Um, and I'll mute myself now so you don't have to continue listening to that. Uh, yeah, but our our focus groups pulled from the like kind of active bagger user community, which was primarily based in archives and uh, a lot of government archives and in specific. Yeah. I, I do want to point out that bagger the application itself is written into the state records. Uh, I don't even know what, what the term is, uh, but, but the rules regarding submission of state records, one of the users that joined our focus groups had it written into their code. Uh, so it's, it's part of the law at this point, I guess. Thank you very much. Well, we have a break now, 15 minutes break. We have to be back at um, yeah, this. Thanks, everyone.